Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Liz. I'm a pharmaceutical chemist and medical technologist with over 30 years of experience in the pharmaceutical, medical device, and healthcare sector. I've also been on the carnivore diet since November of 2022. I lost almost 100 pounds and I reversed all of my medical conditions. Today, we're tackling a topic that's particularly important to those of us who have and still do embrace the more fat is better mantra. What happens when you go off the deep end with the fat? What we're talking about today is something called lipotoxicity. So let's get into it right here on the Carnivore Science Channel. Now before you click away thinking I'm about to bash the carnivore diet, not gonna happen. I was fat, sick, and I had tried just about everything, seriously. Back then, my life didn't involve a whole lot of living. If you've been severely overweight and suffering, you probably know what I mean. I still believe it can be incredibly beneficial for many people. You will notice if you watched many of my videos, I'm one of the more fat the better type of people, but I do want to clarify my position and add a little more context. When most people first come to carnivore, often it's out of desperation and they feel kind of crazy even trying it. If you're on the carnivore diet, you probably can relate to that. I mean, if I had a dollar for every time I've been stared at as if I had two heads while someone asked me, you mean you eat only meat? It used to be kind of annoying. Fortunately, because I wouldn't shut the hell up about anything, now the same co-workers that actually stared at me like that, they kind of go the other way when I see them coming down the hallway. So, that's okay. But no, well, seriously, I, I did have one person that actually listened to me. She actually tried it, and she's doing great, so there's that. Now, all of us who came to carnivore in such a desperate state were actually in that state because many of us avoided fat like the plague at all cost. Those of us who lived through the 90s were completely brainwashed to believe all you need to do is eat less and move more, or calories in, calories out. We lived a miserable existence, all that spandex and flailing around. We ended up exhausted, hungry, and miserable. And the whole Richard Simmons thing that just can't be explained was unfortunate. I mean, he had a fro. It was very weird. Anyway, if you live for years and years running away from the animal fat that is necessary for you to be healthy, you get sick. So, when you need to heal, a higher-fat carnivore diet is critical. If you spent your life eating the standard American diet, or SAD diet as we call it, consuming insane amounts of carbs and processed chemicals, your body doesn't even know how to burn fat any longer. And it has to go through a process called fat adaptation. It has to learn how to burn fat for fuel. And that's when those ketones kick in and a lot of the magic starts to happen. These same people actually suffer from metabolic dysfunction and hormonal issues. Keep in mind that your hormones are built using fat. Animal fats are critical building blocks that you're always going to need in your diet. But on your carnivore journey, will your diet look the same way a year from now that it does in the beginning? Maybe. Probably not, though. If you're a food addict... You can also overdo it on just about anything, even fat. Seriously, as a former sugar addict and binger, I can tell you, you have to be careful with everything. And as someone who once binged on sugar-free cough drops, I have the street cred to say that. There are warnings on that bag with respect to that. I still have a little PTSD about it. Anyway, oh. That's way off topic. But the point is that most of us start out pouring on the butter, rendering the tallow, or opting for the fattiest cuts of meats that we can find. We chase the fat, and we do this day in and day out to catch up on all we've lost. At some point, if the healing and or weight loss goes well, there comes a point of diminishing returns. And past that point, we can start to experience the negative effects of lipotoxicity. So, what exactly is lipotoxicity? Well, let's break it down. 
Imagine your body's cells, particularly your muscle cells, liver cells, and pancreatic beta cells. On a high level, you can think of these groups of cells as sort of metabolic control centers. They're designed to utilize fat for energy, especially when you're in a ketogenic state, which is often the case on a carnivore diet. For example, pancreatic beta cells are specialized cells within the pancreas that produce and secrete insulin, a hormone critical for regulating blood glucose levels. Normally, when you consume fat, it's broken down into fatty acids. These fatty acids enter your cells and are either burned for energy in the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, you remember that one, like in elementary school, but it is a, like a cellular power plant, or they're stored temporarily as triglycerides for later use. This is a normal healthy process. But here's where lipotoxicity comes in. When there's an overload of fatty acids entering the cells far more than the cells can efficiently burn for energy or safely store, things start to go wrong. It's like trying to fill a bathtub that already has water in it with a fire hose. It overflows and the excess starts causing damage. This excess fat doesn't just sit there innocently. It starts to accumulate in places it shouldn't like the cytoplasm and even the mitochondria themselves. This accumulation can trigger a cascade of detrimental effects. One of the primary issues is mitochondrial dysfunction. Your mitochondria become overwhelmed. They can't process all of the incoming fat, leading to incomplete fat oxidation. This incomplete burning of fat generates harmful byproducts like reactive oxygen species, also known as free radicals. These free radicals cause oxidative stress, which is essentially cellular rust. They damage cellular membranes, proteins, and even DNA. It's like a tiny internal fire causing damage throughout your cells. But it doesn't stop there. This cellular stress also triggers something called ER stress, referring to the endoplasmic reticulum in your cells responsible for protein folding. When the ER is stressed, it can lead to misfolded proteins, further disrupting cellular function. All of this cellular turmoil can become a vicious cycle. The mitochondrial dysfunction, the oxidative stress, and ER stress accumulates in one major problem, inflammation. Your body perceives this internal damage as a threat and it mounts an inflammatory response. While acute inflammation is good for healing, chronic low-grade inflammation driven by lipotoxicity is a recipe for disaster. This chronic inflammation coupled with the direct effects of excess fatty acids on specific cells leads us to the biggest health consequences of lipotoxicity. Especially relevant to anyone looking for metabolic health, insulin resistance, pancreatic beta cell dysfunction, liver fat accumulation. First and foremost, insulin resistance. This is a huge one. When your muscle cells are overwhelmed with fat, they become less responsive to insulin. Insulin's job is to open the doors for glucose to enter the cells for energy. But with insulin resistance, those doors are sticky and glucose struggles to get in. When glucose can't get in, what happens next is your pancreas has to pump out more and more insulin to try and get the job done. This leads to chronically high insulin levels, which can further exacerbate weight gain and make it harder for you to access your own body fat for fuel. This brings us to the next critical point, pancreatic beta cell dysfunction. Your pancreatic beta cells are the ones responsible for producing insulin. When they are constantly overworked and exposed to excessive levels of fatty acids, they can become stressed and eventually die off. This is a direct pathway to type 2 diabetes. It's not just about carbohydrates. Excess fat, when not properly metabolized, can directly contribute to the failure of these vital insulin-producing cells. And finally, fat accumulation in organs. We're not just talking about subcutaneous fat under your skin. We're talking about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, where fat builds up in your liver, impairing its function. We can also see fat infiltrating other organs like the heart and skeletal muscle, contributing to their dysfunction. So you might be thinking, but I'm on a carnivore diet. I'm eating healthy fats. How can this be bad? And that's precisely the point. The source of the fat isn't the issue. It is the quantity and your body's capacity to actually handle it. 
Even the most healthy fats, when consumed in excessive amounts beyond your metabolic needs, can become toxic. Water, if you drink too much, can kill you. It's the same thing. You can overdo anything, trust me. It is harder to binge eat on a carnivore diet because the foods are more nutrient-dense, heavier, and there's more fat there to satiate you, but it's possible. So think about it. If you're not particularly active or if your body's metabolic machinery is already a bit sluggish from years of poor diet, you might not be burning through fat as efficiently as someone who's highly active and metabolically flexible. In these cases, adding more fat just adds to the overflow. This isn't about demonizing fat at all. Fat is absolutely crucial for hormone production, nutrient absorption, satiety, and providing a clean burning fuel source. The key is finding your individual sweet spot, depending on your circumstances. So, what can you do if you suspect you might be experiencing lipotoxicity? Or if you just want to optimize your carnivore diet for long-term health? Number one, listen to your body's hunger and satiety cues. This is paramount. Don't force yourself to eat more fat than you truly need to feel satisfied. If you are adding butter and tallow until your plate is literally swimming, um, you might want to rethink that. Number two, you can prioritize protein. On a carnivore diet, protein should be part of your anchor. Fat and protein are the two biggies when it comes to carnivore. Protein is, is also highly satiating and provides the building blocks for your body. Many people find that they naturally reduce their fat intake when they prioritize protein sometimes. Number three, adjust your fat intake based on your activity level. If you're highly active, training intensely, or doing demanding physical labor, your fat needs are naturally going to be higher. If you're mostly sedentary, your fat needs will be lower. It's not one size fits all. It depends on the person, the lifestyle, and what type of health they're in. Number four, choose appropriate cuts of meat for the situation. Instead of always reaching for just the fattiest cuts you can find, incorporate leaner options at times like sirloin or flank steak or even some chicken once in a while. As much as I hate chicken, I'll eat it, but I, you know, or even fish. You can always add a controlled amount of fat back in if you need to. There's always butter, because as we know, butter is our best friend. Number five, consider your metabolic health baseline. If you're starting the carnivore diet with significant insulin resistant, type 2 diabetes, or fatty liver, you might need to be extra mindful of your fat intake initially. Focusing on healing and improving insulin sensitivity may require that you have a more moderate fat approach in the beginning. It may not. It depends. You have to see how your body responds to the different macros. Number six, don't fear lean days. It's okay to have days where your fat intake is naturally lower. Your body is incredibly adaptable and a bit of variability can be very beneficial. Metabolic confusion is not necessarily a bad thing. Number seven, monitor your symptoms. Are you feeling sluggish? Are your energy levels inconsistent? Are you still struggling with weight loss despite being on carnivore? These could be subtle signs that your fat intake might just be too high. Understanding lipotoxicity isn't about fear mongering. It's about empowerment. It's about giving you the knowledge to truly optimize your health on a carnivore diet. While fat is essential, the more is better mentality without considering the context and your individual needs, your metabolic capacity, and just your situation in general, your lifestyle, this can inadvertently lead to the very health problems you're trying to escape. We have to be smart about this and use our mind to actually make sure we're doing what's good for ourselves. So next time you're prepping your carnivore meal, Take a moment to address your fat intake. Are you truly hungry for that extra pile of butter? Or is your body telling you that it's had enough? Listen closely and you'll be well on your way to truly thriving on the most powerful diet that there is out there, in my humble opinion. And when I mentioned metabolic confusion, I actually want to add some context to that, is that I think it's extremely beneficial to periodically fast just abstain from eating anything. 
I also think it's very good to do what's called a fat fast where you only consume fast for a bit. And that's if you're not having any kind of problems that you think that have to do with lipotoxicity, perfectly safe to do. Do a fat fast for a short period of time. You can also do where you're eating only fat, basically, and you're not consuming hardly any protein and, of course, no carbs. You can also do uh, where you eat um, ma mainly protein and you don't consume any fat. This is actually good. It keeps, your, it keeps your metabolism on their toes. Because if you think about the way that we actually existed for years and years and years and years, is that sometimes we would have one type of food. Sometimes we would have leaner meat. Sometimes we would have fattier meat. Occasionally, we would have to be omnivorous. We'd have to eat a berry or something. I mean, I think that if you actually you know, give your, make the parts of your system work that don't work as often, this is good for you. It's like working out a muscle occasionally. Now, I'm not going to recommend anybody go on the sugar diet because for one, a lot of people are eating like candy and things like that. And uh, granulated sugar, like that type of sugar is toxic to the body. It's horrible. Now, a lot of people doing it with fruits and stuff. If you wanted to actually take a few days or a day or something where you actually eat fruit, I mean, you have to do what's best for you and what works for you. Monitor your situation. Um, you know, if you have a problem with binging and you think that would lead to it, I mean, you can try it, but you have to be careful. If you feel like it doesn't cause any of these problems, then, you know, okay. Do your blood tests, check your ketones, check your glucose, check fasting insulin levels. Um, you, you've you really got to take care of your own health because no one is actually going to do it for you. Now, this might not affect everybody. And again, we're talking about marinating in like a pool, pools of fat for tremendous amounts of time, I think. So I hope this shed some light on lipotoxicity and uh, what the potential downfalls of this could be. And more importantly, this has been very important to talk about because we have to think about the evolution of our carnivore diets. We might not eat exactly the same thing forever because we're probably going to not need the same exact ratios of fat and protein forever because if it works we will start to heal if we start out metabolically dysfunctional and then we become better it stands to reason our diet's going to change some so I mean just keep it in mind you have to always constantly test what it is you need to be eating and what's working for you pay attention to your energy levels all that kind of stuff so thank you so much for joining me and if you like the video if you could give me a thumbs up I would really appreciate it and if you want to, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.